welcome to another episode of Legion Elite Motorsports. I'm your host, Isaiah. And today, we're going to continue the engine build for a customer. And let's get to it. Okay, so here is our block. Right, this is the sleeve that I told you that has to go in so you don't lose oil pressure. Or, you know, so the engine doesn't bleed internally and not gain oil pressure, I should say. And then over here is our oil pump area. So you see a lot of holes and galleys and everything. Um, so we're going to, well, because the engine is upside down, we're going to turn the pump upside down and bolt it in so there's going to be two holes up here that is threaded and you're going to lay it down just like so let me just spruce this down a little bit and i'll be right back okay and again because this is upside down we're looking at the feed right through here but we're gonna finish bolting this on and we're going to move on to the next item. So we'll get her done. Okay, so it is on and tight. This screw we're gonna have to uh, get from probably Ace Hardware. Uh, whoever took it out ended up stripping it out, so that's gonna come in later. Um, we put medium strength uh, thread lock on these two. So that's good to go. And we're ready to move on to the next thing. So let's do it. Okay, we got the next thing, which is the balancer shaft cover on the intake side. So um, basically I laid down a new gasket put a little Indian head to hold it in place. And now we are ready to put this bad boy on. Okay, and like I said, uh, the engine is upside down. So this may look a little weird, but we are going to put up the plate just like so. And boom, put the two screws and have that tight. So that is on and tight. And we're gonna move on to the next thing. Okay, and next item we're gonna put on is the sandwich plate. So there is, uh, this is the uh, part that bolts to the block. And you replace this O-ring, including the one inside there. So because there is an O-ring inside here and it's uh, brand new, it's gonna be a tight fit. So this lays down like that, then this goes inside. This uh, increase in diameter, you lube it up with uh, your Lucas and you take it from there. And then on this side is where your oil filter bolts to. So it looks like that. Well, you know, um, you'll see in just a second. So let's lube this up and get it put in. All right, so she's on and tight. I used a 30 millimeter from an axle kit and it fit on there perfectly and uh, tightened it down real good. And next I have to put the 14 millimeter down here. And that's it for this piece, at least. So, yeah. Okay, and next, we're going to be adding in some uh, a nice vintage piece. This is um, interesting. I've never seen this one before. Patented. Hmm. Well, um, we're going to be adding in this piece, including the sprocket that holds up 
the uh, water bracket that holds up the cam gear. And we're gonna be adding in the chain. We're not gonna add in this tensioner yet. We're waiting for the uh, little piece of rubber that goes inside of here before we install that part. So, um, yeah, let's get to installing this stuff and we'll be good to go. Okay, so first things first, we're going to add this. Okay, this is the first sprocket that holds the uh, timing chain. And you'll notice it is uh, has a keyway, so you can't get it wrong. Also, you see there's no dot back here, but there's a dot here in the front. This is your timing mark to match up to your timing chain. All right, so we're gonna slide this on first. All right. Here we go. All right, that's the first one. And I'm gonna slide the chain on. And luckily this uh, chain that is uh, part of this build actually has the uh, silver notches. I remember some of them didn't have that. So I'm gonna show you a way to make sure that your engine's always in time no matter what. So here's the timing chain, right? And uh, all of the marks are going to be on the right side. This is you facing the motor. So um, let's say these uh, links aren't here. The easiest way to make sure your engine is in time is to count from on the right side from one link, so this is one, to here, which is 20, 19, 20, right? So no matter what, you can mark it, scratch it, whatever, to the point where you're able to see uh, point A to point B. So that's like the number one way, if you don't have these chrome links, to make sure that your engine is in time. Okay, so that's just a little FYI and that's very important because if this is off, everything else is off. Luckily, this is a non-interference motor so the pistons will never touch the valves unless you have like a, an extreme cam with a flat top piston. But other than that, these are non-interference motors, so you're safe. Um, and that's, of course, if you do do the timing wrong. It won't run right, it'll feel funny. You get the point. All right, so we're gonna install the uh, cam holder and the cam sprocket, and we're gonna slide this chain on. So, I have the uh, spring tensioner in there just for right now. And then up here you can see the timing gear. And there's a mark on that also. So there's one there. And then one at the base. See it's behind, let me clear that up. So it's behind that. And that is exactly in time. So that is done for right now. And next, we're going to get into the rear main seal. Get that on there and uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, here's the rear main seal. Weapon of choice, flathead and hammer. Now don't go too crazy. Granted, this uh, backing for the uh, rear main seal, not the um, seal itself, but or not the um, surrounding, but the actual seal itself has steel all the way around it with you know the um, the rubber and everything. So you can definitely slide it into here. Give it a couple taps, don't go crazy, but give it a couple taps until it's flush with this. 
This one's a little damaged, but it should not leak or have any problems, especially uh, in this area, should be fine. And um, basically what you wanna do, and you should always do, because if you don't, you're gonna burn this seal out if you don't, is you have to lubricate it. So, um, you know, basically uh, lubricate this seal just, just on this surface right in here on the inside. Just lubricate that, then bolt everything up and you're good to go. So we have the gasket and everything for it. We are going to prep this for that and everything should be ready to go on. Okay, so while this is drying, I'm going to move on to the next item. <clears throat> and uh, granted, we're not gonna be putting on the timing chain cover just yet, but we are going to install the front seal while the rear seal is drying. All right, let's do that. Okay, here she is in her chromed out Mac Daddy form. And what we're going to do is we're going to install the front seal and also the seal for this, uh, I forget what this is for. This is for the adjuster. So we're going to lay down both gaskets. Well, a gasket and a seal, rather. And we will be good to go on this. Okay, here's our seal. And here's our front main seal. So we're going to install this. Actually, this one's a lot easier to install. Um, probably get a rubber mallet and bump this all the way in and that should be good to go and then this one we're gonna lay down some adhesive which will be our weapon of choice indian head and yeah we're gonna bolt this down and uh, pop the seal in and then move on to the next item okay so everything is on and tight you got the seal in. Um, we're going to lubricate this the same. A little assembly lube. This is on and tight. That's good to go. And next we're going to do the um, oil pump chain. And I'm going to show you how that goes on. And we'll take it from there. Okay, the rear main seal is in. And we got the lubricated uh, seal there. And the housing is on and tight and she's looking good all right now moving to the front on this you kind of got to go backwards to go forward so in order to get this pulley on you have to take this loose and then bring everything out together including taking this down then uh, you put the whole chain on and then you slide everything forward together put your thread lock back on here and uh, your chain guides and you're good to go so that's how that went on and I will still be able to take this piece out to get the uh, little rubber piece that goes in the middle so that's no big deal there and yes yeah, she's looking good Okay, so we got some new uh, components in today, and this was the piece that we were missing, and new spring. So I'm going to end up using this one, because see, this one doesn't have the grooves cut out. It's actually smooth, which actually works better for tension. Um... I can definitely tell this is an updated piece because the original one had the grooves on it and the spring was not this long. Definitely not. So I'm going to 
add this in and we'll take it from there. And here's the old unit. Yep, the spring is slightly shorter and not as thick. And you see the grooves on this one. So yep, we just swapped everything over. That goes in there. That rubber piece that's missing goes inside there. And that's it. And we have our piece for the oil pump and this completes all of the bolts for the oil pump. This one's uh, aftermarket. If you can save your original, please do. But let's put this in and we'll be good to go. All right, that is in, on and tight. The new shape won't interrupt anything and that's good to go. So next we're going to do the timing chain cover. So let's get that prepped up and ready. All right. Then we lay down our new gasket for the cover. And of course I use Indian head to hold everything in place. Um, works really good. I'm gonna wait for that to dry. And while that's drying and everything, we are going to put on our chain guards on both sides. And by the time that's done, it will be ready to have the timing chain cover on it and we'll be good to go. Just like that, four bolts, it's on. Two on this side, two on this side, and done. So now we're ready to put on that timing chain. Everything is dry and looking good. All right, timing cover is on. Next, we're going to do water pump, gasket, and pump. Make sure you don't mix up your screws for your timing chain cover because there are some short and some long. All right, so let's get that going. All right, so water pump is on. Next, we're gonna slide in the crank pulley. All right, that is beautiful. All right, so we're gonna put uh, a center bolt in here and you want to use a little bit of uh, medium strength uh, thread locker on that and that should uh, make sure that doesn't back out on you so I'm going to do that and pop that bolt in there and that'll be good to go okay so let me tell you what I've done all right so I've turned the motor so the timing mark isn't going to be on the same link anymore. And also what I've done is I've added the pulley and this piece here. Um, this person is going to be using uh, Mega Squirt. So they're going to have the coil on plug and everything. And you can see everything that comes with it. Um, and... I believe the teeth is in the wrong position. I'll take that off. This is supposed to be up here for a top dead center. So this will have to come off and get redone, but we're not gonna do that right now. Uh, we're just gonna make sure everything is in its place and take it from there. Okay, so I'm going to lay in the uh, ARP head studs and we're going to tighten those down. These uh, Allen head, and I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Okay, so we are going to be putting in the ARPs, um, these uh, um, Allen head, and the fastener lube assembly. Um, which we're going to put on the base, which goes into the block and on the top. 
for the nuts. So we're gonna lube these up. These go pointing down, Allen key pointing up. And yes, we're gonna slide these in. Okay, so we got the studs in here and that is looking right. Next, we are going to do the dropping of the head gasket. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about that. So let's get to it. Okay, we have our Ajusa head gasket, AJ USA. And it has an X there, which is basically saying this is not a factory gasket, it is metal. And I'm a firm believer in not laying down dry gaskets. Dry gaskets is easy to slip, you know, oil or water through. But this gasket comes with a light adhesive on both sides, which uh, helps bond to either surface, the head and the block, which I highly recommend. Um, I'm running this head gasket currently myself and I've never had an issue with it. Um, this one to me is like a thousand times better than the Felpro. So um, if you do use Felpro, I hope you're using some adhesive. The adhesive you wanna use is this one here that works really well. So yep, just keep that in mind. And also we can't forget our filter. Amsoil. Make sure you lubricate the threads on the inside and the filter to make sure you get a good uh, seal. And some people would fill this with oil, but we don't have an oil pan on there, so that's going to leak down and make a mess. And try putting uh, a sideways filter on filled with oil. That's going to be a mess in itself. So anyway, moving on. We're going to add these in. These are the guides that go here and in the front. So I'm going to take one of these. Then you just lightly tap it down. It has a seat at the base and it will uh, stay in place. So I'm going to do that for both of these and we will be ready to drop the head. Hey, um, seems like we ran out of time, but it's okay. Uh, we're gonna continue this build next episode. Also, um, I'm gonna show you the proper way to lay down the head so it doesn't lift or cause any other additional problems. But uh, make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notification, and I'll see you next episode.